I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson and welcome to UBC's Next Big Thing. My guest today is a student, actually she's a graduate at UBC from the Faculty of Human Kinetics, which to me is a fascinating field and I'm so excited. Me too. <laughs> yeah, and we have it here at the University of British Columbia in the Okanagan. You're doing some, you've done some really interesting research around stretching. Mm -hmm. So maybe talk about that a little bit. Sure, well, stretching is one of those things in the world that's confusing mm -hmm. to a lot of people. When should I do it? Is it beneficial? It translates into men, women, young, old. In the research, cardio and strength training have been done. And so stretching is this up and coming field and we wanted to get some information out about when's a good time to do it, is it different between males and females. And so originally I wanted to look into whether stretching affected a force production. So if I stretch or if a man stretches before he exercises or afterwards, is it going to affect the way that we can lift weights or make a movement? And from that we got some really interesting results and so we changed the question a little bit to look at these differences between males and females. Interesting because I know as a pseudo you know exercise uh, enthusiast that stretching has always been a, a bit confusing for me and when has been the best time and you hear so many things but now your your research is saying that maybe it's different for females than it is for males so what did you discover on a very preliminary basis we did find that there was a difference between males and females in the effect of stretching and more where the body stretches when you're comparing a male and a female mm. so we use ultrasound to actually look inside the muscles and inside the tendon now the muscle that we were concerned about was the gastrocnemius which is your calf and thank then, you for clarifying <laughs> no that for me it attaches to the Achilles tendon, which okay. is a huge tendon in the bottom of the leg. And we use ultrasound to look at the architecture of the muscle. So when we say architecture, we're dealing with fascicle length or muscle fiber lengths, and also the pinnation angle, which is the way that these fibers connect to the bottom of the muscle. And then the effect that stretching has in terms of tendon length, and then the changes in the architecture. So for females, after we stretched them, they did a subsequent force production. So they pushed on their toe as hard as they could. And same with the males. With the females, we found that there was a lengthening in the tendon after the stretch. And in the males, we didn't find that. And then in the males, we found that their muscle architecture changed. But in the females, we didn't find that. So, so what would that mean? Does it mean it affects your body being prepped to do the exercise that's coming up or to to benefit from the next exercise that one's about to do? It affects the way that your body absorbs the stretch and also the way that it'll be able to recover from that stretch in the okay. next force movement. So for a female, if their tendon got longer, they created this almost slack in the tendon, which needs to be taken up before they can push again. For a man, they didn't have that effect in the tendon, but in their muscle architecture, so we're talking about the fibers themselves, their fibers rearranged so that they may be in a better position to push the next time or produce force the next time. So do you think this research will have an impact on when women should do the stretching before the prescribed exercise and when men do, uh, approach their exercising then? It could. It is a, it's a very preliminary study and the subjects that we looked at were a young healthy UBCO population. Oh, okay. But when we're looking at that we need to do more research into making it translatable to an entire population. So we want to look at older women and older men. But from initially, we could say for a young, healthy population, it may be better if a woman stretches after she exercises, and it may be better if a man stretches before he exercises. Okay, so we just want to clarify the research isn't conclusive yet. It's and, pointing and us towards a, a route to take for sure. Well, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, normally on the show, or at least up to this point, we've had professors that are working on research, but you're a student, and you're actually going into your master's really soon. What is it like to be able to participate in research and especially in research that you're passionate about? It is so interesting because I never wanted to go into research. In our program we have an option to take an undergrad research thesis and I was approached by my supervisor Jen Jacoby about getting into a research and we talked about what we could do and right from the get-go you're designing your own research project, you're executing the project, you're recruiting people to come in and then you actually get to see the results come to light in front of you. So you make an idea of what you think might happen mm -hmm. and then when it starts to either be different, which is 
really neat, or it starts to go the way that you were thinking about, you can see the effects of your hard work coming out in front of you. And then you get to publish it or you get to go public with it. And I think at the root of everything, it helps people. And I think that's what's most exciting about doing research, especially research in human kinetics, because people are interested in things that affect them. Mm -hmm. And it affects people. And I find it super interesting. Well, how did that enhance your, your learning experience here? I mean, to be able to have that impact where you discover something. It made me so much more aware about different things that I hadn't considered throughout my undergrad. So I feel like I learned a lot more about the body, about the way things happen, the techniques that we used. I've never used ultrasound before and all of a sudden I'm using ultrasound in this. I'm using different stimulations, I'm using different equipment throughout the lab and it enhanced everything that I've learned and allowed me to take all of those courses through my undergrad and turn it into something in this finite project that I can present and say look what I learned and now look how I can present it to you throughout those four years. Wow, that sounds so exciting. It was, it was really neat. Did it help you decide to go in, into your master's? Definitely, because like there's so much room left in this research field. Right. The master's is going to be a continuation of this project in some way, shape or form. How long does this effect last? How is it for older women? How is it for older men? Is this effect the same if someone's athletic, if they're not athletic? There's so much more research that I can do now from this infantile little project it can now become something so much bigger. And I love that about it. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming Thank on the show and you. sharing so that with here. us. So we're probably going to follow up, uh, you know, after you're, you're well mo into more research and find out what you've come up with. I'd love that. And that wraps it up for this edition of UBC's Next Big Thing. Until next time, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Mm -hmm.